Change the music if I want to change the music. It's Wednesday, December 14th from the Total Soccer Show, Dirty Tackle, and Howler Magazine. This is the Goalmouth. I'm George Koreshi. On today's menu of bite-sized soccer news, Yaya Toure accidentally got drunk. Hey, me too. The LA Galaxy has a new coach. Stuff happened in the MLS expansion draft. Beitar Jerusalem, Jerusalem cracks down on hate speech. The one little itty-bitty South Pacific Island nation that gave Jamie Vardy its vote for Ballon d'Or. Oh, and we are having a giveaway details at the very end. Yesterday, in Barkingside Magistrates Court, Yaya Torre pleaded guilty to drink driving, as the English put it, but since Torre was driving a car and not a cup of coffee, I'll translate. He was over twice the legal blood alcohol limit when the police pulled him over last month in East London. According to the BBC, Torre said he thought he was, quote, drinking diet cola from a jug at a party without realizing it had brandy in it. He continued, it is well known that I am a Muslim and do not drink. Torre will pay a fine of 54,000 pounds making that one expensive night out. Kurt Anolfo was introduced yesterday as the LA Galaxy's new head coach. Now that Bruce Arena is taking over the national team, Anolfo spent three years as the head coach of Galaxy 2, which plays in the USL, and the team made the playoffs in all three of those seasons. Before that, he was the head coach of the Kansas City Wizards and DC United with a combined record of 30, 41, and 25. He also played for LA and a few other MLS teams. In fact, this is one of the most interesting parts of the announcement. For the first time in the Galaxy's 21 going on 22 year history, uh, the head coach, the GM, and the president will all have played for the club. In other MLS news, the expansion draft happened yesterday, and if you thought I was going to get into that, sorry to disappoint you, or relieve you, as it were. There's a link to a roundup in today's email, but I will say that Toronto goalkeeper Clint Irwin was left unprotected, and then he was selected by Atlanta, which confused me because they just signed Brad Guzan. In the end, they ended up trading Irwin back to Toronto for a defender plus general allocation money. It was like the most MLS day ever for Clint Irwin. All of this is a not very interesting way to plug my interviews with Irwin on the most recent episode of my dummy podcast. I spoke with him a year and a half ago when he was still playing for Colorado. And then again last week ahead of his first MLS Cup appearance and the long meandering road he took to his current success. It's just a fantastic story. So you should check it out. I'll drop a link in the show notes. Consider yourselves plugged. Israeli club Beitar Jerusalem, which is known for its rather right-wing supporters group La Familia, has announced that the next time those fans chant offensive things, the team will simply walk off the field. La Familia has been doing this for a long time, but just two weeks ago in a loss to B'nai Saknin, which has a largely Arab identity, La Familia shouted things like, terrorist, burn your village, Muhammad is dead, and death to the Arabs. Our guy, Sam Patterson, has a really interesting piece about this with lots of background over at whatahowler.com. And finally, if burn your village is sort of like saying delete your account on Twitter, then perhaps that sentiment should be redirected to the journalist in the country of Vanuatu who gave Jamie Vardy the player's only vote in the Ballon d'Or ballot. Fun fact about Vanuatu, its flag has a horizontal yellow Y shape on it, which is supposed to represent the shape of the islands as they look in the South Pacific. Other countries that have flags or the physical representation of the country appears on the flag include Bosnia and Herzegovina, Brazil and Eritrea. My name is George Qureshi. Taylor Rockwell will be with you tomorrow morning. Thanks for all the great reviews you're leaving in the iTunes store. Don't forget to keep doing that, please. Oh, and I promised you a giveaway, didn't I? Here's the deal. Last week, we finally put seven really cool photographs up for sale in the Howler shop. We're talking big 15 by 9 inch photos. They're really beautiful. Uh, We're going to give one of these babies away. What you have to do is go to shop.howlermagazine.com, look at those photos, and send a short story or a poem about one of them to goalmouth at howlermagazine.com. If you want to write a story, it should not exceed five sentences. If you write a poem, it should not exceed a hundred words. Oh, uh, I guess one last thing. Try to make us laugh. That would be good. So go to shop.howlermagazine.com. Look at the photographs that are up for sale. Write something about what's going on in one of them, whatever you whatever you want, really. And then email that to goalmouth at howlermagazine.com. The deadline is Tuesday at noon Eastern time. Got it? Good. I leave you with today's Goalmouth top tip. It always pays to ask, what's in the jug?